Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been forever since I filmed anything, but we are starting the year off right and I'm going to do a foundation, contour and highlight and brow routine. So this video would be three parts. I thought that would be best instead of one very, very long video. So in the first part, we will be doing foundation routine. This is the routine I've been following probably for about a few months. So I would say seven to eight months. Um, so I will be sharing with you what I do on a daily basis to beat my face and look like this. So if you want to see how I did this, um, this would be a three part series. So first part, foundation. If you would like to see this, as I said, keep watching. Please subscribe if you aren't already so that you can see when I upload all the other videos and then also click the notification bell so that you know exactly the minute I upload and you can go watch it quick quick. And then also all my socials are down in the description. I will have them there. And yes, please enjoy. Okay, so as future Angelica said, we are doing a foundation routine. <laughs> Let me just show you what she showed me. This is Yuri lying. This is Yuri lying on my bed, and the sign she showed me when I was talking <laughs> was that. <laughs> okay, so as future Angelica said, that we are doing a foundation routine as well as a highlight and contour routine. And a brow routine. I thought I'd start off with that for the new year. Um, I feel like that's like the fundamentals of doing your makeup. So we are going to do this in three parts. So the first part of this video would be the foundation routine. I'm checking her. She's sitting there and <laughs> making faces. So the first part is the foundation routine. So that's what I'm going to start with. And then for the next video would be part two, which is the highlight and contouring. And then part three, obviously, the brow. So I'm going to do kind of i feel like you can't really do that often so much of an in-depth video um on a foundation routine well you can you can explain like to the t what you're doing but i mean you can show the product you can show what you're doing and then that's about it so i'm gonna do it as in-depth as i can i'm also gonna do a skincare routine down the line but that won't be included in this because i've already done it and i didn't film it and i only thought of it afterwards so we'll do that separately um, but for now, foundation routine. The first thing I did after I've washed my face and I did a mask and did the hair and whatever is a moisture. No, I toned first and then a moisturizer. I'll include the moisturizer in this. Um, I just feel like it's part of your foundation routine to make sure that your foundation goes on flawlessly and that your skin is hydrated so that you don't have any flakes no matter what foundation you use, in my opinion. So my everyday moisturizer that I use is the Garnier Skin Active Hydrate and Refresh with aloe extract this is a normal day daily day moisturizer i find that this one is very light so um it's not heavy at all like a night cream it's literally perfect for applying makeup um i also use this on my clients which is nice because it's for i think it's for combination to normal skin which suits most people um it has no parabens no silicones or artificial colorants in and um it's just really great for your skin so that is what I use. I also use their company, um, what do you call this? Toner. So yeah, but that's skincare. So I use that for my skin and then afterwards I will go in with a primer. I am out of my primer, well kind of almost out of it. This is the primer I use. As you can see, I've opened the top already. Um, I'm on my last bit. This is the Maybelline Baby Skin Instant Pore Eraser. This is a extremely amazing drugstore, um, like affordable brand that, well, affordable pore minimizer or primer that you can use. I also use this on clients sometimes. It is really great. It's affordable, which is nice. So that's what I use. Other than this, a more higher end, I would say, is the Floor More Primer. Um, it's really great for all skin types and it makes your makeup look amazing. So I will be going in with this. Firstly, I've already moisturized my skin. I'm trying to get like all the bits out of this primer. It's amazing when you open up the bottle that, or you cut open the top that there's so much more product in instead of just throwing it away. So what I do is I focus that literally on my T-zone because I feel like my pores here is like out of this world. 
the older I get. I'm turning 26 in a week and I feel like the older I get, the more problems I get with my skin, which is weird. You need to, your skin needs to relax as you get older. And I feel like I'm turning into a teenager in regards to my skin. Um, it's looking the worst that it's like been in like a couple of months for me. Um, so I'm just trying to figure that out. But okay, so I've literally, as I'm swiping, I'm pressing it into my skin just so that I can have a nice smooth base. This is my problem areas. If your problem area is more around your mouth or up to your um, forehead, you can put it there as well. But I mean, this is my problem area, so that is where I focus it. Then afterwards, we can go in with foundation. So these, I use two or three methods to apply my foundation. Most of the time, I just use a normal found, flat foundation brush. I put my foundation, I've got like a little thingy I put my foundation in and then I smear it onto my face, I paint my whole face and then I leave it for a few seconds because I find that leaving your foundation for a few seconds on, um, it oxidizes a bit even if, if it doesn't oxidize in color but like the formula oxidizes um, and dries so it makes it more um, opaque. So a more full coverage. So I put it on, I leave it on for a second, and then I buff it in. You can do this with a light, lightweight foundation if you don't want to, um, if you don't want to do like a second layer on your skin. You can literally paint it on your whole face and then leave it for a few seconds, 10 to 12 or 10 to 15 seconds. Just leave it so that it oxidizes, and then you can buff it in, and you'll get a more full coverage as the foundation dries and oxidizes. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, I necessarily don't leave this foundation on very long. I've got two foundations that I'm currently using. The first one, which is my Holy Grail that I've been using for literally a year and a half now, is the Flormal Perfect Coverage Foundation. This is an excellent, excellent foundation. I tried three or four different ones. Yuvi's watching me again. <laughs> I've tried three or four different ones, but I always revert back to this one. 12 hour with SPF 15. Um, it doesn't have flashback though, even though the SPF is pretty, I think, standard, the 15 SPF. But this foundation is really amazing. It's full coverage. It's just, I feel like it's it's one of the best foundations I've tried in like forever since I've been doing makeup and that's like 10 years ago so um, this is my holy grail I always revert back to this I've tried three or four different ones in the space of time that I've that I've had this one and I always go back to this one recently I've tried out the insta perfect um, foundation from essence they say that it's strong matte waterproof foundation this I feel like the hype is way too real for what it actually is. I had really high hopes for this foundation and it really disappointed me to be honest. I thought it's going to be like my floor mall and it's going to be nice high full coverage, nice matte. It is matte but it's so sheer. I feel like I need to build it up at least three times to get what I want. I do this trick where I leave it on for on my face the first layer and it does work a bit so I will go in with a second layer sometimes but most of the times I'm really not impressed with it. I haven't tried mixing the two, I'll try that and get back to you guys. Um, but yeah, for today, because this is my foundation routine, I'll go with my holy grail that I've been using for a while, and that'll be my Flomo. So one squirt of this, or one, one squirt, oh, one pump of this Flomo foundation is enough for your whole face, but because I travel a lot and I do people's makeup, I have a whole set of the color schemes, so I've got them all in little pots like this, um, and I've got my own. But yeah, I use this with my foundation brush and then what I do is I literally paint my face with it and I go downwards because of the hairs on your face, the natural hairs on your face. If you go up or you go in an upward motion, you'll brush the hairs of your face up and it'll go under your skin and it'll make little, I don't know what you call it, frimmelkies. Um, <laughs> like, it just shows up in your face and it's like there's texture. So we want to go downwards. And I do my whole face and then I'll go in with concealer over that. So like that, the whole face. I mean obviously up in the forehead. And then this one I'll leave like for a second or two and then go in with 
my beauty sponge and don't forget the jawline as I said, I normally, not only normally, but there's three different methods I methods or ways to apply my foundation. The most used one would be my um, Real Technique sponge. This is literally all I use. I love it, I love it, I love it. There's lots of different dupes, but I feel like this one, it lasts the longest. It doesn't tear. Um, I can literally use one of these for a year and then after a year, it will start like tearing up or whatever. Um, so this is the one I use most and then the other 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 option I have for applying your foundation is my real Tex Te blah, 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 blah. The other option I have is the real techniques buffing. I think it's buffing brush This is the very first thing I bought before even a makeup sponge um, Years and years and years ago and I'm so proud of this one because it's a little baby for me and you can buff it really into your skin which is nice I like going in with my sponge afterwards though so you know choose whatever you like um, I said there was three options what was the third one I think it's only those two Yo, I don't do the whole silicone thing so that's the two options so I'm gonna start buffing this in my sponge is dried out a bit now it was wet but I'm talking too much so I'm just buffing that into my skin and then we'll apply concealer. So this is just one pump and one layer of the um, Flormal Foundation. This is pretty much the coverage I like if I want a bit more extra coverage that I know I'm going to wear for like the whole day or night and I have either an event or I'm going out or whatever. I'll do a little bit of extra coverage around my cheek area or my nose area and my forehead um, but this is pretty much the everyday coverage I go for. So next up is concealer and I literally don't do concealer options. I mean if I find one that I like, I stick with it. So my concealer that I've been using for, I can't even tell you, forever since I found out about it is I think four or five years. Um, I just switch between colors but the one thing I stay with is the Elegal Pro Conceal and this is just, it's affordable, it works, it's got 10 different colors, well probably now 30 different colors because they came out with a new range. But um, this is the Holy Grail, this is the one I use, this is the one Yui uses, so we are just in love with this one. Um, this is the colour Porcelain, we sometimes do Ivory, well I say we because we're in the same house. I do um, Porcelain and Ivory, so yeah. Most of the time I just do my under eyes and then I'll like spot conceal kind of. Um, but yeah, most of the time just under the eyes because these bags are not Chanel. So this is my one that's like almost finished. I've got a new one, yeah? <laughs> so I'm just gonna use the bit that's left in this one. I put the most like in the, just under the tear duct because I feel like that's where I've got the most like bluish undertone. I don't go in with a, a um, color corrector. I feel like that's a bit too much for the under eyes and then it creases. So I go in with a bit more concealer but just there is where I need it the most. And I don't tap it as much with a sponge just to move it around so it's just on that area and then just lightly tap it in so it's there and then I'll go down to my cheek area when I was little about five we went on holiday in Cape Town before we lived here I um, burnt my cheeks literally to a crisp and I didn't have SPF on or anything so I've got this natural redness on my cheeks and even when I have foundation on it still comes through but I think that could be yeah, so you've also now found out that I had burnt cheeks, so um, that's why I do a bit of concealer on that. That's why I don't wear blush as well, Yuvi, because I've got naturally red cheeks. So this is after I've applied it, now I'm just going to buff it in with my sponge and then afterwards we'll set it. I don't do cream contour, that's just no use in doing that, I feel like. Um, so buffing this in and then we'll do just setting powder. When I buff it out, I go right up to the temples just to give you that more lifted cheek effect. So in the middle of my cheek and then taking it up, as you can see, I look 10 times better. And that is then the liquid part done. I look so much more awake and I love it. 
So for setting powder, I've always been up and down with that as well. I really like the normal MAC translucent powder. There's a hair on my face. I've tried a bunch of different powders and the one I constantly go back to is the Nude Illusions Loose Powder Trans Transparent Mac from Catrice Cosmetics. So this one, it's just a little pot like this. It is pretty amazing. I've used the... I've used different ones. The one from Allegal. I've tried the MAC Translucent one. I've had that for a long time, but it's very finely milled and I feel like you get a lot of flashback with that. Um, so this is unfortunately the powder that I keep going back to and I feel like I'm not going to find another one pretty soon that's affordable and amazing. So I go in with this powder all over my face. I start with my under eyes with this pointy tapered brush. I got this in a set with um, nine other brushes, so a 10 set from Take A Lot um, a while ago, but I'm sure it'll still be up on the site. So I take that and I kind of do a lot of powder on it and then I just go back with my sponge just to blend out some creases and then I'll pack that on especially in the corners and then just work my way out and just leave that powder there for a while. It's not completely baking because I'm not like whiting out my face um, but it's just a bit of extra just to keep everything intact. like a triangle for that just to make sure everything is set and then I go around my mouth and chin area and don't ever swipe your foundation or your powder over your foundation because it will move and it'll look extremely patchy so I'm just pressing it in lightly so this is this area, this area, and like my eye area is where I use this brush. And then for the bigger areas um, that I don't necessarily have like a problem with fixing or fixing with the powder or setting with the powder, um, I use this brush for. This is a flat top, I think it's a Kabuki. Um, this is the Morphe E6 brush. Um, this is perfect for like just tapping it into your skin. I've got another one that's a bit smaller. This is the Morphe RG6 smaller than this one which is also nice I like this one more for foundation um, but this one is pretty good so then I do the rest of the powder I just swirl the brush swirl the brush in this and then I'll go over the cheek area just pressing it in I do have a combination skin so it's not dry it's not normal it's not oily it's got a bit of everything all over it so I do set my foundation. Um, it also just feels like it's more intact when you set your foundation. So that is what I do like that all over. And obviously the forehead. Forehead, I'm speaking real American. The forehead. And then I'll just like lightly tap over that bit of extra powder. And then I'll go over my eyes again because as you can see, there's a bit of a, a crease line there now with a concealer. So I'll just blend that out. And then with whatever's left on this brush, I'll just go over that. And then we've got a perfectly matte skin, which I love. And now we are ready for the contour and highlight portion, which would be in part two. So please stay tuned for that. And I'll see you in that video, which would be next week. Um, yeah, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video. Well, thumbs up it. Comment down below what is your favorite foundation and your favorite powder and concealer. I'd really love to know so that I can try that out. And then stay tuned for the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.